All right, everyone, we're going to get started. Um, I just wanted to remind everyone, if you're going to use social media, please use the hashtags, and then also fill out the survey, the link, it, or the URLs right there. Um, so right now we have Chris Black, and he's a senior developer with MentorMate. He's uh, taught a number of courses on interactive development as an adjunct faculty at the Art Institute's International MCAD, and he's going to talk about analog watch faces of Android Wear. Thank you. Welcome, Chris. So, I'm Chris Black. Many of you already know. I'm a senior software engineer at MentorMate. I work on mobile applications and web applications. And until recently, I hadn't worn a watch in over 10 years. What changed that? Android Wear. As many of you know, since this is the an Android Wear track, Android Wear is a watch that connects to your smartphone and allows you to see notifications, run simple applications, or in this case, have a, a custom analog watch face so that you can see the time, which is the primary function of having the watch. So when deciding you know, what to do for a watch face, the first decision is digital versus analog. And I chose analog because it aligned more with kind of the traditional watch face and with Apple Watch releasing a line of watches that are very expensive and recently there's another watch manufacturer that partnered with Android Wear. Having the top of the line watches, people are gonna want something that looks more like a watch. And so I felt like analog would be a really good place to start and something that would also allow me to use some really cool math to draw out custom watch faces. So today we're going to talk about how you can build your own analog watch face uh, using purely code and really not much code to draw some really cool stuff on the watch. So before we get into some of the code, and this won't be a very code heavy presentation, but all of the code will be available afterwards. Uh, I need to clean up some things and get it on GitHub. I'll post it to my Twitter account and you can download the project to get started uh, on your own watch face. But the basic components of a, a watch, an analog watch, are the background, in this case, which is white. We've got the tick marks that go all the way around the watch that identify the hours and the minutes. We've got the hands to tell you specifically what time it is. And the numbers, which to me it really helped a lot because I'm not used to reading an analog watch. So without the numbers, it takes me a couple minutes to figure out what time it is. So that leads us to something called polar coordinates. This is something that I think they taught even in high school, but really I didn't get to use this much for practical application until college, where I had to build a, a kaleidoscope. And the base requirement for the project was to map an image over four quadrants. So the majority of people just went to XY coordinates, which you can um, put in a grid and there are four quadrants, so you can just reflect in four areas by flipping some positive and negative uh, numbers in the coordinates. But for me, a kaleidoscope is more than four quadrants. I mean, it could be an infinite number of uh, reflections on an image, and that makes it more interesting. And I recall back to learning about polar coordinates and look that up, and with polar coordinates, in a, it's basically based in a, uh, in a circle instead of in quadrants. So as you can see here, a polar coordinate is a distance and an angle uh, from a center point instead of a x and y. And what this allows you to do is create an infinite number of, of breakdowns based on um, a circle, which for watches fits quite well. So you can see here, these two images map pretty well. So this is your polar coordinate system. The red lines represent distances from the center, and then the blue lines represent angles. And so by speaking in polar coordinates, you can very easily create watch faces without really much effort at all. And when you transpose the two, you really start to see that polar coordinates were basically made for building watch faces. Not sure if that's what the initial intended use case was, but when you transpose these images, it's essentially what, what we're doing here. 
So, to draw an Android, you need four basic components. You need a bitmap, you need a canvas, you need paint, and then you need some sort of a primitive drawing like a rectangle or a circle. And with the uh, uh, framework that Google has set up for us for drawing watch faces, they've actually already given us a canvas to draw onto. So you can pretty much ignore the bitmap unless you want to draw, you want to start drawing images or different bitmaps onto the face but they give you a canvas right off the bat. So you have something to draw onto. So really the key elements that you need in order to build the watch face are the paint and then the primitive. So for a rectangle, if you wanted to draw a background, you just create a rectangle and then you'd give the paint a color and draw that onto your canvas. So what does that look like? It's just four lines of code and you've already got a background first step in building your watch face. In this case we've got the new paint, we set the color to yellow, and then we create a rectangle with the size of the watch face. And then draw that onto the canvas that's given to us in the on draw method, and we're set. And what's interesting with the code that Google provided, uh, I wouldn't have thought that drawing everything out on every frame would be necessarily uh, performance, you know, would be good performance wise, but that's the code that they provided and I haven't run into any performance issues with any of the watch faces that I've built using that method. So when you kind of think about this in your head, the on draw method gets called automatically when you extend a, a watch face class to draw your watch face and in, every time that on draw method gets called, you're drawing out all of your elements. So you're drawing out each of the, the things that you need and you can cache some of that if it's not going to change, like the tick marks in the background. You can cache that and just draw that, and stamp that on, and not have to do all the calculations every time. But for drawing your, your hands and everything else, that's all something that gets done every frame in the on draw. And then the other thing to keep in mind is that right now there are square and round watch faces. So what I've done is I've, in the sample code that I've provided, I have a library that allows you to automatically identify between the two and you do need to have some custom drawing to differentiate because the circle is going to have a different background, the tick marks are going to be on a different, you know, they're going to be circular instead of uh, bordering the rectangle. So what does this do? It draws a yellow square. <laughs> Gotta start somewhere. And I'm not sure what it drew me to yellow. I think it was because right after I got the watch, uh, it was right around Thanksgiving that I went and visited my parents. My dad had a, a watch with a yellow watch face that looked really cool. I was just kind of drawn to that and wanted to replicate something like that. So when I created this first yellow watch face, I actually had it on my watch for a few months and kept going back to it even after downloading and paying for other watch faces because I just liked how clean and simple it was. I guess the other motivation besides having the Apple Watch coming out and Android Wear being on the market is that a few months ago Android released their official API for watch faces allowing you to build and sell these watch faces in the marketplace. So on top of being able to put it on your own Android watch, you're also able to sell these um, on the Android market and potentially make revenue. So next, draw the tick marks. And again, this is where polar coordinates really shine. We're able to draw all of the tick marks around the watch. And this is actually just a couple lines of code, but I broke it down just so it wasn't you know, a lot in one line. Uh, these first, so in a while loop, we're going to draw the number of, of ticks around a circle, which is 360 degrees, divided by the number of, of ticks we want. So we pass in a canvas that we want to draw them onto the number of ticks, and then a paint, which is what color are they? You know, do we want them to have an outline? Do we want them to have a gradient? Uh, rounded edges, all sorts of things you can put into the paint to describe how they're drawn. And so we start at the angle at zero, and while we haven't completed a full uh, 360 degrees, we're going to draw a tick, and then increment the angle by 360 divided by the number of ticks. What's great about this is you can draw the minute ticks, you can draw the hour ticks, you can draw them uh, every second, you can draw as many or as few tick marks as you want around a circle with the same function. 
And then because the draw line function does draw in a uh, xy coordinate system, you do need to convert the polar coordinates to xy coordinates. So as we're going through here, the angle, the polar coordinates need an angle and a distance. The angle is going to be the angle where you are around the circle. The distance is going to be half the distance to the edge. Yes? Is, is the uh, zero, zero coordinate uh, in the upper left? Zero, zero is in the middle. Is so in the polar coordinate system, your, uh, your origin is at the center. No, but I mean on the watch, like the actual pixel grid. Is the pixel grid? Yeah, on, on the watch itself. Um, yes. It starts, that's why I'm offsetting by half. by half the width and half the height. You're right, yeah. So the XY coordinate system that you're drawing onto, um, so you need to translate those points. So you start at that middle point, and then you move in a direction around that. Uh, but doing the math on a purely XY coordinate system would be, it wouldn't be fun. But using polar coordinates, we can then translate that to XY at draw time, and it greatly simplifies drawing tick marks. So with just a few lines of code, we've got our tick marks. Right? So we've got a background, we've got tick marks. This is starting to look like a watch face, and we're still less than 10 lines of code. The one thing you might notice here is that in that function, I was drawing a line from the center to the edge. But here, lines don't make it all the way to the center. So what I did is I used that, the same code that we used to draw the background and I gave it a slightly smaller uh, width and height. So what I did is I stamped another background on top of it, giving it a margin around the edge, giving it the effect of only drawing a little tick mark. But that simplified the code from being able to draw from the center instead of having to you know, calculate more points and draw out. I basically just drew all these lines from the center to the edges, overlaid something else in the center, and then I drew the hour marks with a different paint, a little bit thicker line, and then in a slightly smaller background again, stamp that on. Uh, but since these are all based, you know, they're all in their own functions, draw background and draw tick marks, it's just a function called to, um, you know, four different functions that again, less than 10 lines of code, we've got our, our background. So, so it's redrawing three times. Uh, correct. So this is, again, something that, since you're not going to redraw this every frame, you can actually then cache this background and reuse it. But this is um, one for the background, one for the tick marks, background, tick marks, background. So it is, it's five draw calls five, five. Yeah. to do this. All right. Um, the code is all going to be available, and I didn't want to get too code heavy right now. If we have extra time at the end, I can dive into a little bit more of the code to look at how to draw out the, the hands and the numbers. The numbers are being drawn, again, polar coordinate system, place the number, and you can actually um, tell Canvas to draw text and then give it a paint, which, again, the paint has all of the properties, so it has your font size, your font color, whether it's bold, what font it is. All of these things live in paint, and then with your Canvas, just draw text. So if you wanted to draw the date, you could draw the date somewhere on the watch. You could draw the current temperature. You could start drawing any text you want onto the watch face, um, directly drawing onto the canvas with paint. In this case, we uh, take the number and we draw around in a circle. So you could, if you wanted to, divide that out and only have numbers at 12, 3, 6, and 9, or you can draw out as many numbers or as few as you want. And then with the hands, we're just taking the time and then rotating them using a matrix um, based on the current time. So it, it draws out the hands based on the current time. So why do all this in code? You can hire a designer to draw a beautiful watch face for you and you know not have to deal with any of this stuff in code. Well, hand drawing that watch face would be tedious. And this is the, a perfect use case for code for uh, precision, perfect, drawing on a watch face. It's faster, it's customizable. So if you want to change out the background color, the size of the ticks, the length of them, anything you want can be done with just changing the paint that you're passing in to the canvas. So with the library that I've created, I break down the paint into its own class and identify all of the components. So you can quickly swap out colors, 
you can swap out uh, different lengths or thicknesses of the lines and it's very easy to, to make it your own very quickly. It's transportable. So you can transport this code and it works just as well on a phone as it does on a watch, which means you can have a companion app to adjust the customization. So by doing this in code, you can create a companion app on your phone, which is what they recommend when you're building a watch face, so the users can start to adjust background color and the, whether or not there are tick marks. The one thing that I would uh, maybe warn you about there is not giving the user too much control over customization. There are a few great watch face making apps out there that give the user control down to the nth degree, but a lot of users um, don't want that. They want something built that looks good with a few customizations maybe on color or you know whether it's circular or, or square or you know, just a few things so that they don't have to spend you know there's a small percentage of people that want to buy something really expensive and spend hours making their own watch face. But the majority of people, especially on the high-end watches, really want something that's going to look good out of the box, make a few tweaks, adjustments, fit their style, their color for the day, and good to go. Uh, the other thing is that it's maintainable, very easy to maintain and adjust when it's built out this way. Um, something that you can use on many different projects. One thing that I don't like about the Google code that's supplied for building out, is Google has provided sample code for building out analog and digital watch faces, is that they kind of lump everything into one class. And while this is maybe okay for a, a basic tutorial or sample, by putting all of that code in on draw, it makes it very hard to customize and maintain in the long run. So by moving all of that code out to its own canvas drawing and then paint classes, you can start to create some really fun stuff. As you can see here, it's kind of hard to see, but it, there's a checkered background. So what I've done there is just passed in a, a checkered paint and draws checkered background. You, so you can really start to do some really fun stuff with this very quickly. So I started Googling. We've got you know that checkered background. Well, what about radial gradients? And here's the checkered background with a radial gradient on it. So again, another one, one more line of code, and you ha have this effect that there's almost like a diamond or a, you know, some sort of a reflective material that's, that's in the backgrounds and the checkers. And you start to do really fun stuff with this. I started playing around with colors, with gradients, with radials. One thing to keep in mind with radial gradients is that the watches don't have as high of a color depth as the computer. So it will look a lot better on the computer than it will on the watch. But when I started going this radial gradient direction, I did start to notice that they didn't look quite how I wanted them to on the watch. So it's always good to have a watch to test this on as you're building it out to make sure it's actually looking the way you want it to. Really subtle gradients tended to come through okay, but if they were really heavy gradients, you could start to see the ghosting, and I can show you an image of what that would look like later. So then, that brought me to Googling radial spiral. For whatever reason, I wanted a radial spiral to mimic a, you know, maybe a galaxy or something in space, just to have some sort of a weird radial spiral. And that's when things started to get interesting. It brought me to this website that I found by complete accident, but ended up evolving this analog watch face into something completely different. So it brought me to a website called crazydad.com. <laughs> Not really sure what, what that is, but there was a lot of cool code tutorials on this website, all written in Java. And so this code that you're about to see, this animation that you're about to see is right here at the bottom, we got what, like 10, 15 lines of code to do something really amazing. And this uses the concept of polar coordinates um, not necessarily directly, but indirectly, to do this animation. So all this is doing is basically working from the center outward, drawing dots and offsetting them by an angle and a distance for every dot. And every frame, it's offsetting them again further and further. 
And you start to see these really cool, weird patterns emerge from this, this system. And the direction that he took it was to find this, this um, pattern that emerges where every dot is as far away as it's going to be from every other dot. And then took that and it went in some completely different direction. But I like the animation itself. And I thought, well, if you can do a sweeping watch hand that moves around the watch, could you turn this into a basically you know, representation of time? And the answer is yes, you can. So this is sped up to give you a sample of what it will look like over time, and then I'll show you what it looks like um, actually on the watch face itself. creates unique patterns based on the time of day it is. So you saw at one point the line was completely straight. And that happens every half an hour, there's a straight line. And then every hour, it, all of the dots actually converge into just taking up one line on half of, the, half of the watch. So you kind of see these different patterns representing different time. And I thought by adding even more color and, you know, basically scaling this over the course of 12 hours or a day instead of an hour, you could actually, by pattern, identify what time it is. And so that's kind of the direction that I'm going to take this, is the ability to customize this even further to help like, create a new sense of, of time with, with pattern instead of um, even necessarily having any hands on the watch face. So it's evolved into something completely different. But to show you what this looks like, I've got this on my watch right now show you what this looks like throughout time, it moves a little bit slower, which I think is a little bit easier to consume. You know, that animation was a little fast, I think a little bit jarring for um, looking at it day to day. But you can see here that the, the outermost dot is moving at the speed of the second hand. So it's giving the representation of time. You can follow that outermost dot if you want to know how many seconds have passed. And again, it at times looks very chaotic and other times converges into a different pattern based on the time of day it is. So I'll leave that up for a minute so we can kind of see the different patterns that evolve over time. So while that's up, I'm going to talk a little bit about the watch face builder that I created. And the reason that I, I kind of dropped this watch face builder and went a different path was because there are already so many great watch face builders out there. And I was concerned I'd get lost in a sea of watch face builders and different watch faces that look like a traditional watch face. And while I would like to eventually get something out there like that, uh, my goal now is to create a watch face that's based more on this animation than um, purely just something that looks like a standard watch. But the watch face builder that I did create 
because it's all in code and easy to customize, you can change the background color very quickly. You can show the second hand or not. You can switch between round and square, changing the tick marks and adding or removing the radial gradient, and even customizing the color of that. So by building this out in code, it really gives you the ability to make a lot of these changes very quickly and prototype different watch faces that you might want. And allow the user to make these changes on the fly and then push them to their watch so that they get the experience that they want to out of the watch. So, the first concern that I had after building this was that it would have a negative effect on the battery. Having this animation and all this stuff going on, and you know, I thought I, I could deal with that later if the problem arose, but I wanted to really see what this would look like on a watch. I've had it on my watch face now for about a week, that animation that you saw, and I haven't noticed a negative impact badly. And I think part of the reason for that is because of the fact that the watch goes into an ambient mode where it's kind of a low power state and on my watch the setting that I choose to have is that in ambient mode it actually completely turns the face off. So it's not doing this calculation in ambient mode. It's only doing this when you're looking at your watch. So, you know, a few minutes a day. Now, which means that you can do some really cool fun animations and not have to worry about the battery life as long as you put in code to support ambient mode. So when you're going to build and release your watch face to the market Think about what you want the watch face to look like when the user's not looking at it. You know, it's just kind of on or off, um, and they're not, it's not active. And so in this case, I could just show the hour hands when it's not active. I don't need all the dots on the screen moving around, because that would be very bad for the battery. Uh, you also have to worry about things like screen burn. So they talk about that on the Android website. You can read more about that. Um, so that when you go into ambient mode, they really want you to have a very simple looking watch face that, you know, where things move around instead of, uh, you know, having it be very textured and colorful or having a lot going on because you do have to worry about screen burn-in on these watches. You also have to worry about icon placement. And this was surprisingly difficult to find documentation for. The functions exist, but they, they call that like a, I want to say they call it a status bar. If you Google Android status bar, the last thing you get is that icon. You get the status bar of the Android phone, you get thousands of Stack Overflow posts. They should have called it something completely different because it was a pain to find. When I did find it, you can set the gravity. So the status bar is the battery icon in the cloud, and that tells you whether or not you're connected to your phone or charging. And this is something you have to account for, especially if you have a white background. And what they call, if you, what to call if you have a very light or white background is set view protection. And what that does is it protects the icons by adding that little black background. And that gives you the chance to uh, to kind of you know change your, your face a little bit. If you have a darker background, you can get rid of that. And then you can set the gravity and move that around on the screen based on how you want your watch face design to look. But you're very limited to where it can go. It can either be centered uh, at the top, left, right, bottom. It, you have to be very careful, so when you design your watch face, keep that in mind, that that's got to go somewhere, and there are only a few different spots it can go. There are some links here as well. I'll post the slides uh, either later tonight or tomorrow. The other thing to think about is cards. You can adjust how the cards appear on your watch face, and you can look up more about that. These are kind of the, the tweaks you make before you submit and things you do while testing. But keep cards in mind. You know, they're going to appear, they're going to cover up part of the screen, so if you're going to put you know, weather or critical information, you might not want to put it at the very bottom, you might want to put it somewhere in the middle if you have a date. Uh, you know, don't, don't line it right where the, that card's going to pop up. They have some great design guidelines out there too if you want more information on that. So this is the, the evolution of my analog watch face from the square 
to a crazy animation at the end. And I'm sure that it's going to evolve even more and turn into something completely different over time. But it's just been a lot of fun working with Android Wear. I've got some more kind of tips and tricks to jump into here. We've got some extra time, which is great. Um, but I'll open it to questions before we go into that. Any questions at this point? Yes? Having the dots under the hand be as simple as the order of your draw. What was that? To have the dots pass under your, your hour and minute hand. That be just as simple as the order you make your draw. Oh, order. yep. It's, that's just the draw order that you call. Yep. So everything can be layered however you want. You just kind of change around the draw order on that. What What is um, different when it goes into ambient mode? Do you have to change the way, what you draw, or is, is it like an entirely different drawing uh, function or something like that? Uh, so the question was, do you, what changes when you go into ambient mode? Do you need to call a separate function? And it, when you go into ambient mode, it will give you a Boolean value to tell you whether or not you're in ambient mode. So in your on-draw method, it's the same on-draw, uh, but you also get a function call when it enters ambient mode. So if you want to make a change, so what they, in their example, they actually change like the alpha mm -hmm. of some things when you hit ambient mode and then exit <coughs> ambient mode. You, so you get a call when you enter and exit ambient mode, and then you also, on your on-draw method, then get a, you know, is it in ambient mode? And then, uh, do they have best practices around like, what you're supposed to do in ambient mode? Like, are you supposed to not use color or, or yeah. something like, is that what yeah. it is? Like, so that, that, I would imagine they have documentation around that. I'm just curious. Yeah. Yeah. So the best practices for ambient mode are in the documentation, and they do recommend having a very simple uh, watch face. And honestly, I, the battery life gain that I get from this turning off in ambient mode is so great that I'd recommend people try it if they haven't already because I, I can get I can go days, I can go three or four days without charging this you know, when the screen turns off in ambient mode, whereas before I, I had to charge it every 24 hours and so the, the gain, the performance gain on the battery is negligible with the animation and watch face drawing, but ambient mode is what changes things. So that's really important to keep in mind if you want people to use your watch face for more than a day. Is there Chuck? Uh, fragments and activities and layout files for watches like there is for rain or something? And are there different watch sizes so you have to scale your whatever you're doing? Um, that is a uh, good question. That actually leads into some of the, the samples I was going to show off at this point. So I'll start diving into some code. So the question was, you know, do you use fragments and activities when you um, are drawing a, a watch face? And the answer is actually no. The, they give you a class that has a canvas and it's, um, I believe it's even a service. Let's look at, look at some code here. We've got Android Studio up. Do you have anything in the, any watch faces in the store yet, Chris? I do not. I was going to launch the uh, one of my watch faces and then I started going down this path of this animation thing and I got so caught up in doing that that I, I kind of put off submitting one of the previous ones I was kind of getting close to. Because again, there's that last little bit of stuff you have to do and test and uh, you know, to me, it, since I'm doing this in my free time, I, I tend to always jump on the next interesting thing instead of spending the extra few hours to polish it off enough to, to get it in the market. But I, ha I, I will say that I, have, I prefer using my own created watch faces. Um, I don't know, there's just something about knowing that, that I made the watch face, even if it's not quite as cool as some of the ones in the market. I always tend to go back to watch faces that I've, I've made. Um, so I'd encourage all of you to, to try it out and build one of your own, even if it's just changing around some colors. So I'm going to describe very briefly the drawing library that I created. Sit down. So this drawing library, what I did is I separated out all of the drawing from the, the service 
that you implement for building out your watch face. So when you build out a watch face, you either select the analog face service or the sweep watch face service. And these services are provided to you by Android. And then to test this, so this was a, a little bit tricky, when you go to build this, you actually need to build it and you'll get an error right away because it'll say, can't find a default activity since there's no activity. And you just uh, basically check a box saying, don't launch an activity. Like it's a service and it will get installed on the watch. And then when it's installed on the watch, you actually need to then navigate to that watch face on the emulator or on your watch. And then after you do that, moving forward, you're able to you know, install a debug and it'll override and then you can hit your breakpoints. But to get it set up, you need to uh, you know, uncheck the run default activity and then you need to actually open it up on the watch as a watch face. So it's kind of a, a pain initially to get that set up, but once it's set up, it's easy to debug. So what this does is it extends a Canvas watch face service and then it, some of the functions you get on here. The difference between the analog and the sweep is the analog will tick every second and call on draw every second. Sweep will actually continuously call it, allowing you to do a very a sweep animation. And a lot of watch faces will actually let you adjust between the two because there is a little bit of a battery performance impact um, depending on how frequently you're looking at your watch throughout the day. So some people like to be able to customize that. Uh, you get low bit ambient mode. You, in this case, have a background bitmap. And then it, this is where you would, so you set your watch face style you know, on create. This is where you set your, your peak mode, your background visibility, and it, you can also add the, the icon protection here. You can place the icon gravity here um, and do a lot of stuff with some, the customization of the watch face. And then what I do is I actually have a, a watch face factory that will generate a watch face by type. And so in this case, I'm defaulting to square, but then when you get a, uh, there's a function that calls back that applies the window insets, and this is where you can then say, is it round, and if it's round, switch it to a round type. So we'll make sure that we've got time for lunch. Uh, how long do we have until? Yes, Ten more minutes? Okay, perfect. I'll end a few minutes early too so we can make sure to get, uh, get in line for lunch here. But I, I've got some more material to get through. So as long as you're interested in this stuff, um, I'll keep going. So we've got the on create, which allows you to set up and cache, you know, if you want your background bitmap. You can, in this case, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm setting a drawable for the watch face. And so in this library that I've created, it will default to just drawing lines for your second minute hands, but if you wanted to customize it with your own image, which is what I've done, that little image that I've created, you can do that. And then when you draw an image, one thing you'll read in the documentation is that your, your image for your hand should be as big as it needs to be. So you shouldn't have a lot of empty space behind it. So with a PNG, you have transparent pixels, and you could make your minute hand you know, really big and have it be the entire size of the screen and then just have all your pixels transparent, but that's um, more, it takes more to, to render that. So they recommend just having the, uh, kind of scaling it down to the pixels you need and they have examples for that. Uh, see, so that's where that's being set is the watch face dot set minute hand, set hour hand, create your time class. And then this is where on properties change, you get whether it's in low bit ambient mode or not. And then you get um, on time tick, which calls invalidate. And you also get an on ambient mode change so you can identify when, when you're in ambient mode. And one of the other things that they do is they turn off anti-aliasing when you're in ambient mode because it's not as important. And then the uh, really the the core of what you'll be kind of looking at here is the on draw, and this is where Google has a lot of their code for drawing that watch face. 
and this is where I pulled all of that out and put it into a library. So all I'm doing is I'm, I'm telling my watch face whether it's round or square to set its bounds to be the width. And the reason that you have to do that on every on draw call is because your peak card might pop up or you have, might have insets. There might be things that change a little bit that adjust your watch face and you, you can then adjust your bounds to account for that. So this is something that you wouldn't necessarily need to do if you aren't concerned about things overlapping, but it is something that they recommend. So in this case, I'm drawing a traditional watch face onto the, and passing in the canvas, the time, and then whether or not we're in ambient mode. And so this is just an, I have an interface set up that each of the watch faces need to implement. And then what does draw to traditional do? It draws a background, saw the code for that. If I have show minute ticks, it will draw the minute ticks. And then it will draw the large ticks. Again, placing a, a, a mask over them to make sure that they don't go all the way into the center. And then I'm drawing the numbers around the, the screen. And if I'm showing the radial gradient, I draw the radial gradient. So this encapsulates everything into you know, a square or round watch face, allowing you to make minor adjustments based on the size or shape of the watch face. And this also will work with any different size dimensions. So it'll work with you know, bigger, smaller watch faces. It's meant to um, fit to the size of the height and width. It's not restricted to squares, uh, which is pretty cool. And then all of the functions below that I'm overriding are doing things like drawing the background as a rectangle instead of a circle. So this is where it breaks out between the two. Uh, you do have to do a little bit more code for drawing the tick marks on a square because you're not necessarily a specific distance from the center point. Your distance will change based on which quadrant you're in. So you actually do still have to account for those four quadrants. Uh, so you're, if you look at a square and you want your lines to go all the way to the edge of the square, you need to account for that little bit of extra that goes beyond the circle on the, on the corners. Again, still very simple code. And then drawing the numbers, I, I told you that we'd go over that. Uh, so that's what this looks like. So you, I have an array of numbers in the base class. Uh, are they? uh, they're up here and I draw them around in a circle. So if we go to the square watch face, I have my numbers. Again, because it's square, I need to account for that little bit of extra. If we're a round watch face, it greatly simplifies things, so we don't have to account for that. And then it's just taking that offset. Uh, what it does is it's taking the text bounds, so you're creating the paint and getting the bounds of the text so that you can specifically center the text based on its bounds and then place it on the screen. Otherwise, it would be a little bit off center based on whether you had one or two digits. So then to draw the text, canvas.drawText, tell it where to place the text, what text it should be, and then, again, pass in the, at the end the paint. And I've encapsulated all of the different types of paint that you need for a watch face into what I call uh, face paint. We got background, border, tick paint, radial paint, hour paint, minute paint, every kind of paint you need. And this is where you can go in and start customizing your face paint to be what you want it to be. So you can change the, the border styles, and you can you know, configure this into your uh, phone application and allow you to change these on the fly. But some of these I just hard-coded in here to you know, give the user only a few options to make adjustments. And then I also will have an example of what the checkered paint looks like. And that is largely the same, but then when it creates the background, it does some fun stuff where it has two different types of paint fill and it um, sets the shaders so that it can you know, break everything down and do a nice grid and, and do some fun stuff with that. So again, all this code will be available. You'll want to focus on you know, taking a look at the drawing library and what that can do and then, um, you know, you really won't have to make any adjustments to the analog watch face since all of the drawing is done inside of the library. All right. Well, but that's that's all I've got. So, any other questions? Otherwise, we get some food.
I, I got through the material. I mean, so if you have any questions, I, I'll stay up here and answer questions. But I do not want to stand between you and your food. I feel like that would negatively affect <laughs> the survey that you're all going to fill out. Well, then I'll just jump in. Um, please take the survey. Uh, give Chris the feedback um, on, on his presentation. And um, Lunch is on second floor. Um, you can either go up the stairs and hang a right and just follow the hallway all the way down, or take the elevators uh, right outside the door here and then again um, go that way. Thanks. We have till one. For lunch. Uh, one more public service announcement. Benjamin is hiring. If you're interested, see me. Uh, that's all. Jeff, thank you. Who is that?